I didn't call you boob. It sounded like I said boob. What's up, boob? What's up, boob? I'm totally okay. Belly boobs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome hey! to the Attack on Titan <laughs> panel with Attack on Titan people. Hi, honey. Good to see you. Sorry. How's it going? I'm good, man. How about you? I didn't even know you. My name is Tom Grimm. I'll be your skipper today. This is the actual spot for back in 1974 that battle for Jaws and our this porn asylum. If you look over on your right, you see those happy. I'm just kidding. I used to be a Jaws boat skipper. That's my stall and show for everything. <laughs> so we are. And my Apple Watch just died because it's been a day. It's okay. So you guys are not allowed to speak to them for another 30 seconds because it's still 5:59. Um, now a couple of disclaimers before we start this panel. Number one, please do not make direct eye contact with Trina. <laughs> if you ask her a question, you speak immediately. Sit down. Don't say anything else. Josh, it's okay. As a matter of fact, Josh, you can throw stuff at the stage. He's fine with that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't throw stuff at Josh. That said, Danielle will be your moderator for this. She is. This is, and they, we've done how many shows this year? It's like a large end of the year. Yeah, yes. So every single show I put in a tech request in every single year, or every single show, this is nine shows of Fan Expo so far, they have gotten the tech request wrong. This is the first show they got the tech request wrong, <gasps> right. So we are treating this like a, um, you, you gotta translate my old person speak. Um, what's, a, what's a recent reference for Donahue? Um, oh, um, Dr. Dr. Phil, man. Does Dr. Phil go in the audience? Does Dr. Phil actually go in the audience? No. So in the 80s, in the 80s, there's a talk show called Donahue, and Donahue had a microphone, and it was a wireless mic, and he'd come to you and be like, if you have a question, raise your hand, he'd walk up to you. So that's the format we like doing. So Danielle is going to be Phil Donahue. Give Danielle a round of applause. To answer your questions regarding um, uh, uh, fighting on giants, or so, I'm not familiar with the show. Uh, is, is it on Fox? It's uh, on Cartoon Network. Never heard of it. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a show called Attack on Titans. It's about giant, naked, uh, genitalist monsters. Oh, what's and funny is, is Trina and I have worked together, she doesn't know I'm messing with her. Oh, no, I do. I oh, yeah, I, you were looking serious now. I'm like, oh. I, I thought that's what we were doing. I thought Oh, I was, I blew it, never mind. I thought she was just serious enough that I thought, I was like, oh god, no, Trina, of course I watch, I watch all the stuff ahead of time, I don't want to be that jerk and walks in and goes, oh yeah, it's this. Acting. Um, acting. But, <laughs> acting, that was acting. But I have not watched season two, I will admit that right now. No. Yeah, so I'm going to leave the panel, because I don't want to be spoiled. Ooh, so, that said, please give our guests a warm welcome. Six is after six, Or do you want to come up here with us? This is Ashton. He escorted us over here. He's no. very, very nice. <laughs> Super sweet. We love Ashton! Oh, you're so cute. Isn't he so much more handsome than Ashton Kutcher? I think so. Josh thinks so. I'm sorry. Oh, shit. Oh, oh Krampus. Dang. Sorry, all ages panel. Oh, crap. It's Krampus. <laughs> There's a new panel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I hope none of you have been naughty this year. That is not terrifying at all. Um, that's the original Santa. Oh, no. Okay. No, that's fine. Actually, he looks, he looks like Grandpa Titan. Oh, yeah! With horns. Santa Claus Titan with horns! Oh, please stop me. Eat my friend Aaron again. Eat my friend Aaron again. We're good with that, right? No, no, you don't need to come up here. No, no. <laughs> Armin's a good boy. I'm not getting that bag. I know Kung Fu. Armin's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, that was not scary at all. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> He's gone. So like, <laughs> jingle, jingle, comes the Krampus. Is that a song? No. Oh. <laughs> it is now. It is now. Right? I'm sorry. We, we're babblers. I'm a babbler. No, no, you're fine. Same here. We're babblers. Well, how do you guys want to do this? Do you want to... Yeah, Donna, heal it up, man. Let's get crazy. Yeah, if anybody has a question right out of the gate, raise your hand, and, and she will come up and Otherwise, give you the microphone. Rambling. Babbling. You will babble. You will babble ramble. Ramble. Ramble babble. Ramble. Gramble. Gramble. Krampus. No. <laughs> that was terrifying. That was really scary. That was really scary. Hello. 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 What's your name? My name's Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi. And uh, first off, I want to mention uh, Josh. Yeah. I just recently watched the first season of uh, Yuri on Ice. Oh, yay! And, oh my gosh, it is fantastic. It, yay! Isn't it just a freaking gorgeous show? It is. Like, I was very apprehensive about it at first because I just like heard rumors of various things of the show yeah. and stuff like that. 
And once it was on Verve, I'm like, oh my gosh, I know I have to watch it. And yeah, it was beautifully done. Fantastic job. It's such a, yeah. With your voice acting. It oh, was thank you. Phenomenal. Aww. Thank you very much. The whole thing came together fantastically. Um, but yeah, it's a tagging question. Oh, yes. it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Oh, okay. Can I ask you a question? Oh, sure. In your eyes, nice, who is Chicken Nugget? Not a thing, bro. Not a thing. Okay. It's totally a thing. Every sorry. time I do it. <laughs> See, she says it's a thing. I'm like, I'm not familiar with that. It's a character. They call it that. Oh, yes. You know. it, it's Rival. Me to me. Yes, yes. I forgot that was a nickname that they gave him to make fun of Oh, yeah, he just told me about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I just remember Yuri, though. Yeah. And that's oh, it. Well, of course. Gotcha. Yes, he's amazing. Here's <laughs> um, my tiger question. Tiger question. Okay. Uh, for season two, just a very simple question, I guess. Uh, what was probably the biggest challenge you had to in your voice acting for the new season compared to the first season? Was there like more strenuous voice parts or? <laughs> <laughs> what is that you're thinking, face? Yeah. <laughs> or any characterizations that you felt um, so changed sure. the way you presented? For the, the second season, like I, I guess if any, if I can consider anything a vocal challenge for this, because uh, like Armin. Armin didn't really, like, Armin wasn't very strenuous uh, in this season compared to the first season. Uh, my voice has just been, I've done a lot more deeper voice roles over the past couple mm -hmm. of years, and a lot of, some of them really heavily screamy and stuff like that, so yeah, my voice yeah. has kind of uh, gone down in pitch from where it naturally oh, really? was because of that, so getting back to the Armin voice was a little bit of a challenge, but other than okay. that, it was, it was actually much easier compared to the first season. Yeah. How about you? Oh my god. I know Yamazaka had a lot of very yeah, emotional so, moments. Yeah, so uh, I think as far when I when I when we started or when we got the call that like season two had finally come through, uh -huh. I was super excited. Yeah. And because there was so much screaming in the first season, uh, that very first uh, recording session, I didn't I didn't book anything for the first two days uh -huh. before it, and I didn't book anything for the next day because I was like, I need to rest my voice. This is going to be amazing. It's been only four. It's only been four years, and I've been waiting for this, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> so I was like really excited, and I was trying to be like cool about it. And I went in and I was like, all right, it's Mikasa's day! And I was so excited and they were like, I can sum up the entirety of episode one, season two, and my lines. Would you like to hear it? Please. Uh, Aaron, I like this scarf. And that's it. Uh. <laughs> that's all I did for episode one. It was the worst. Um, but I think, I, for me it was super easy too. I mean, battle, battle cries and screaming and all of those things I love because they're so cathartic and it's just like wow you know um, I save all of my traffic anger for those screams um, <laughs> but uh, yeah so there it, it just wasn't I feel like it was so much easier this yeah. season because it, it was I mean the three main kids still are in the show but the, I mean the character development for all the other characters yeah. and all of the side plot lines and everything uh, but emotionally for Mika says she I think she had a lot more growth this season. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and then there's like the last episode where stuff happens and I don't want to spoil it, but yeah. it's real cute. Yeah. Thank you. Like real cute. Thank y'all. I don't know what this voice is. That's not going to surround guy. That's not going to Oh, what is Can that called again? What is that called again? The, uh, is that, is that just vocal? No, it's the, it's like, oh my god. Is it vocal fry? Yeah, I think it's just vocal oh. fry. Sorry. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Can we do that the whole time? Yeah. 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 Hello. Hello. Um, I was just wondering how you both got into voice acting. Sir? You, dang it. <laughs> 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 Not it. Uh, uh, I, uh, I tell the story the same way every time. Uh, I... I had the very good fortune of falling into acting when I was really young. My mother kind of put me into theater as a way to keep her, uh, to keep me from ruining her fine linen while I made costumes, <laughs> so I could ruin other people's linen in the theater. Um, and I, uh, I also loved cartoons and just any form of animation from the time I was really young. And I jokingly say my first words in this world were "Ducktales, woohoo," <laughs> but it could be true. Um, and it just, the two just kind of eventually married. Like, uh, growing up, 
doing mostly just community theater, a lot of musical theater and stuff like I, I, you know, I loved it, and that's kind of where I really honed my comedic timing when it came to performance and stuff. But uh, I found I found myself very limited by theater, kind of pigeonholed because you you do kind of get cast by your physical type, you know, how tall you are, how tall you are, how big you are. Uh, it, it will kind of shoehorn you into just very specific roles. Uh, but with voice, you, you have a lot more freedom to just, just depending on what you can do with that. And so, like, eventually, when I realized, oh, wait, Donald Duck isn't real. That's just a dude doing his voice. That's a job. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it's like, I want that job. And, and so I just kind of uh, sought it out and uh, fell in love with anime around the time that, you know, Pokemon hit and be, became mainstream. And that's when me and my brother got into it. And, uh, I I, uh, I became a little more addicted than he did, and found out uh, when I was in high school that Funimation was about an hour and a half south of where I grew up, and ADP was about two or three hours south of me. And I just kind of saw which one I could uh, find some content info for, for first, and got my way in, did an audition, and they liked me enough. They kept using me, and here I am, 14 years later. Dang! <laughs> 14 years? Mm -hmm. Started in two, yeah, well, it will be 14 years in January. I started in January of 04. On what show? Uh, Wedding Peach for ADV. Wow, I didn't know that was your story. Yeah. That's a good story, uh, bro. Yeah, it's, uh, it was it was insane. Like, just the fact that it worked out that way. I've never known you without a beard, so the entire time he was telling that story, I was imagining, like, you, but like a smaller you with a beard, like, watching DuckTales. <laughs> Uh, my story is really similar, actually. Okay. I've never met anybody that started in a because usually there's no one way to get into voice yes. acting or acting or anything. It's it's usually a crapshoot. Can I say? Yeah. Uh, it's usually a, a crapshoot. Um, so uh, yeah. So um, I was nine when I started uh, performing. So I started at my local community mm -hmm. theater as well. Uh, I auditioned for Annie. Why I thought they would cast a Japanese girl as Annie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, I can do it. Um, that's a theater <laughs> reference, that was a song. Uh, not well sung though. Um, yeah, so I auditioned for Annie, not cast, shocking. Um, I could have been a great orphan, uh, but uh, <laughs> I could have. I was hungry all the time, because I am hungry all the time. Um, but uh, I was eventually cast in a show, uh, I think it was Oliver. <laughs> they were like, all right, you can't be an orphan. Street urchin, sure. Uh, I am a minority, it uh, doesn't matter. Um, so, I started touring professionally when I was 13 with a theater company. Why my mom was like, oh yeah, this is fine, like go ahead. I don't know. I think it's just because she was a single mom and had four kids. It was like, please take one of them. Just take her, please, for the love of God. Um, and so then I just uh, was acting uh, from a very early age. Um, and I, I loved it. It's just playing pretend. It's what I've always wanted to do and be until I got to college, at which point I was like, real world, I'm going to be a lawyer. It's funnier to me. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Um, so I was in college and I was broke because that's your job in college is to be broke. And I was very good at it. Um, and a friend of mine told me about an audition at Funimation. He was an audio engineer. And I was like, no, Jimmy, I'm not gonna do that. I'm a grown up now. I don't act anymore. I'm gonna be a lawyer. He was like, it pays. I was like, when is it? <laughs> And I auditioned, and the book, bit, the acting book, acting, uh, bit me again, and I was like, oh, I guess I'll do this for a while. And then a while turned into 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how it happens. Yeah. And then you like wake up, and you're like, people are like, what do you do for a living? It's like, I, I do voices. And they're like, what, what does that mean? Like, cartoon voices. Well, have I seen any of your stuff? Do you watch cartoons? No. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do? Um, I'm going to be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a follow-up? Yeah, uh, I was just wondering, uh, between the both of you, how many different uh, shows have you done, uh, projects? Have how you many done? voices do you have in your head? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, with us up here together, I think right now we have 30 voices on stage right now. On stage, I think. in general. How many shows have you done? You're in the plus 200, right? Yeah, plus 200. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I stopped counting a long time ago. Yeah. Somebody else was like, oh, you've done over 200 voices. I was like, dang, that's crazy. 
I mean, it's like, so I guess, that it, I can't even, re, I, I can't math even, so like, like how, <laughs> can't math. I can't math, so like how many shows a year does that average after, you know, like 13, 14 years, but like now, like we're, it just, you just, you, you do just kind of start to lose track after a yeah. while, just how many, and sometimes, you, like, very rarely will you, will you ever do more than one character in a show, but like, you know, on the rare case, especially if you're doing like Walla and stuff, then like you might play multiple characters, but yeah. like, once it gets to the point where you're just doing one at a time, it's like, well, you've done over 200 individual shows. Like, good God, really? <laughs> okay, well, I guess this is my career now. <laughs> I feel like uh, <laughs> there was a kid that came up, he was so cute, he was a year, I think his name was Samuel, he's like 19, and he had like, he was wearing like the khaki shorts uh -huh. and like the belt, and he was like really put together. He was, he was like, let's take care of business first, not take too long. Yeah, he's so cute. So he was so cute. He was like, hey, are you, uh, have you been in, or were you in this show? And I was like, I don't know. And I pulled out my reference cards, because I have reference cards, because I can't remember anymore. I was like, I don't know. I, I feel like I was. So I pulled it out, and I was like, yeah, that's me. That's me, that girl there. His name escapes me. But that's me. Uh, otherwise, she would be on this card. He's like, oh my gosh, you were the main character? I was like, yes! <laughs> of course! I remember that very well. He's like, will you do a line? I was like, yes! <laughs> like, Can I Google it? Uh, yeah, that's random, random. So, over 400 shows together. Together, yeah. How many shows have we been on together? The first show we did together was Kenichi, yes. for sure. And that was my very first show. Yay, Kenichi! That was good! Yeah. 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 show of funny. It's first show of funny. You uh, were so nice. He was so nice when I first met him. He's like, hi, I'm Josh. I'm Kenichi. I was like, why are you being so nice? Like, we're all from, you were so nice. So nice. Great guy. Just happy to you. I mean, we get to Kick live it. with our imaginations. Right? Yeah. yeah. We get paid for the voices in our head. Indeed. Those people get committed. We scream at television. They're like, here's a check. Yes. <laughs> Excellent way to describe your job. Next time somebody's like, "What do you do?" I'm gonna be like, "I scream at televisions for a living." <laughs> so, so you're in politics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes, sir. My name is Jose. Hi, Jose. Hi, Jose. Yeah. So, yeah. What's the strangest fan experience? What's the great? What's our greatest fan experience? No, no, no. What's the strangest? The strangest, strangest fan experience. I don't think I really have strange. Bull Loney, you don't have a strange one. Or are you are you being nice? Come I'm being on. nice. Okay, no. Uh, the very first one that ever happened to me, that the one that just, it's always the one that pops into my head, was it really wasn't all that strange. But like it was right after it was after uh, my first lead role in a show, which was for a show called The Wallflower, uh, that uh, that was done by ADB back in like 2007, 2008, and we premiered the first three episodes of the dub at Onicon in Houston. And uh, the creator from Japan flew out for it and everything. It was just wow. a whole big deal and like really cool. Um, after we did the first couple of, ep a couple of episodes, uh, I left you know the panel room and, and uh, after the premiere and everything, and I was walking around the con, I went to the dealer's room, and uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. And as I'm sitting there talking to her, I suddenly feel two hands come around <laughs> And clasp really hard, oh, no. like around my gut, and no. and I I'll, I just look over and I just see this head of just really brown curly hair, and I thought it was uh, my handler. I was like, oh hey, what are you doing? And I just hear this voice I did not recognize go, hugging Kyo, hey, and like, oh that's what's happening. <laughs> And you know, turn around and just like, yeah, it's oh, really nice to meet you. Did that whole thing, and she was she was really sweet or whatever. And it's like, okay, very nice to meet you. And as she walks away, she goes, I'm gonna stop you when the DVD comes out. And I was like, oh, thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> never saw her again. <laughs> so you never saw her. So she's yeah, doing her job well. she's doing it very well. She's back there right now. <laughs> <laughs> stop her. Uh, so we my strangest fan experience, uh, it was kind of, so I was at a convention, it was like maybe my second convention ever. Um, I was in Philadelphia, uh, but just outside of Philadelphia, in a small little suburb called King of Prussia, which at first I didn't believe was a real place, but it is. Um, and Johnny F. Bosch was there with his band, I Shine. He's very talented, so it was in I Shine. So great, great guy. Um, and it's the first time I'm meeting him, and number one, He's Johnny and Bosch, and number two, he was a Power Ranger. 
So uh, he's super fit, like really handsome, and I was single at the time, so I was like, hey, I'm Trina. <laughs> Do anything for you? <laughs> yeah, he's married. That's great. But uh, so I met him, and he was like, "Hey," uh, because the convention had planned for about a, like 1,500 people, and 5,000 had showed up. Wow! And they had this is back in the day with before laptops. Like they had like one of those old like square Mac computers, and they were checking everybody in one by one. Oh, and like the, it was winter, and it was snowing, and it was cold. And people had been lined up since five in the morning, and it was wow. insane. The computer went down, so they were just standing out there, and there were so many people that they called the police, and the police were like, we need SWAT to come out to like help crowd control or something. Wow. I was like, SWAT? Like, what are they gonna do? Like, do we need do we need SWAT? <laughs> do I need to go home? Is this place safe? Uh, but Johnny was like, hey Trina, uh, we're gonna go outside. We're gonna sign some autographs for all the people waiting, just to keep them calm, it's gonna be awesome. And I was like, I don't think anybody's gonna he was like, we're going. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> So they gave me this clipboard and a sharpie, right? So uh -huh. uh, <laughs> we go outside, and I'm I'm kind of a jerk, and so I, I like when people are like, "Oh, let me escort you." No offense, that fashion. Like when people are like, "Let me escort you," I'm like, "I'm fine. Don't worry about it." Which I've since stopped doing because I was like, "Yeah, Johnny, you go over there and you sign. No big deal." And so like you know when you're in a crowd and it's so crowded that you're like touching people, and then it starts moving. And you're just like, and I'm not that big, so I was just like, yeah, this is fine. <laughs> Guess I'm going this way. Yes. <laughs> this is fine, and like I sign a few, and then it, like people stop asking for autographs because I just start like moving, and and like if you have a clipboard and you're in a sea of really angry people, oh boy, it looks like you know what you're doing, <laughs> and so like the fans are great, the fans are always great, and but you know. You know who doesn't like waiting in line outside since five in the morning while it's snowing with their babies? Mothers. Oh boy. And it's like the mom radar went off. <laughs> they were like, over there was a clipboard and a lady. And they like swarmed me, and so they're all screaming at me, and they're like, we need to get in, it is cold out here, we don't have IDs for our children, and their children. I'm like, I'm really sorry, I don't know what to do. And like, it's still, and like now it's getting raucous, like these moms are angry. I feel like I'm getting decked by a mom. Oh. And like, we're moving, and they're screaming, and it's awful, and then like I run into a wall of a oh. human being. Just a giant dude in like full SWAT gear. Dang. And I turned around and I grabbed his vest and I was like, My name is Trina Nishimura and I need to go inside. And he, he took his mask off and he goes, Can I have an autograph? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> he was so scary. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, <laughs> it was so scary. It was so scary. I feel so sorry for you. It was so scary. Oh my god. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought I was going to get fetched by a mom. And I'm from Texas, so I would fight back. Uh, <laughs> like, oh boy. That little kid's going to be like, Trina fetched my mom. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. But did you make it out, though? Did I make it out? No. no. I did it. No. I did it. I was like, I just started screaming for Johnny. I was like, Johnny! Yeah, so, security. Yeah, it was, it was eventually like the promoter found me. She's like, "What are you doing out here?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> she like brought me back inside. How long have you been doing cons? That was like my second convention ever. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was awful. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful, man. Oh, she I'm was, so sorry. God, it's like, You know, like 40, 50 pounds lighter, and like, oh, remember my fur, my fur face? It was rotten. It doesn't matter. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, great black question. Black fur. <laughs> I'm sorry. Black fur. Uh, well, I, I used to have a black fur. Yeah. I love black fur. Yeah, 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 anime Boston. Oh, I loved that fur vest. And I had that little blue dress with it. I remember things because because of my outfits. But yeah, I had this really great, it doesn't, you guys don't care. That's what I <laughs> I got hit by a cab that day. Wait, what? Was what? That, Boston? that was what? Boston? Yeah, yeah, you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember before. when I was dating that awful guy who ended up being a racist? Ooh. Oh, yeah. That was Damn. awful. Uh, you, you would think when you're like, hey man, yeah, we can totally go out, but aren't you a racist? Because you say some stupid jokes. And he's like, no, no, they're just jokes. Turns out, 
<laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Oh, that's right. Any other questions? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have questions because we'll just keep talking. We will gab. We'll gab. We'll gab. Debbie. Oh, yeah, Hi, yeah. honey. Hi. Hi. Can you do the Armin scream? <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetie. I can't do the scream. It's really oh, physically challenging yeah, to do the screams and stuff. Um, I can do the speech. Oh, yeah, it's speech. I'll do the speech. <coughs> Armin Arlicht. That's how I get into care. I just say his name. <coughs> like, I am a soldier, and I have dedicated my heart to the restoration of humanity, sir. Nothing could make me prouder than dying for such a noble cause. If we use his Titan ability with the manpower we have left, I believe we can do it. We can retake this city for humanity's glory. And what little time I have left to live, I will advocate his strategic value. <laughs> That's easier to do than the scream. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah, the scream, like, it's fun, and I love, like, doing that, but I learned really quickly after the first couple of cons that if I, especially if I do that on the first day, I will not talk to anybody the rest of the weekend. Yeah. Like, so I'm really sorry. I wish I could. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. <laughs> Sometimes people are really mad about it. They're like, you don't want to do the scream for me? Really? <laughs> I waited in line. And he's like, um, I... Where's a clipboard? Where's a clipboard? <laughs> I'm gonna talk to somebody about this. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I, I imagine you as imagining you at, at various points in your life, but you as like a prepubescent teen, looking <laughs> weird, and an Armin's voice like cracking and everything. Uh, well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were real awkward. Oh my God, I still am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I have a question. Yes! Um, obviously, you guys have a lot of different characters that you play, a lot of different roles. I wanted to know, for either of you, is there any particular instance or line that you had to say where it just had to keep being repeated, or it was just like not quite right, and to the point where you're like, I can't stand saying this line anymore? Have <laughs> you I mean, had any struggles with stuff like that? Dancing around. <laughs> you're dancing around you're it. Dancing that's, around. that's what people say. Oh, yeah. You're dancing right around it, like when you've said it like 18 times. It's like, wrong, you almost got it. So one person in particular says that. Mm -hmm. One director in particular will like, you'll do like 25 takes on a line. It's like, split the difference. Mm -hmm. Little more. Little less. Split the difference. Dance right around it. Not quite yet. You back off the mic? We got some mouth noise on that one. Like, what? Uh -huh. Okay, look at me. Make this face while you Make this face! It's like, it's not, it's not working because you're not doing the face. Look at my face. <laughs> I miss you. Yeah. Uh, Man. Um, but, favorite line, fa or weirdest line? I can't line. think of any, like, that necessarily, off the top of my head, I, 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 I can't just, like, I can't think of any there where I've, I just had to like, do them over and over again ad nauseum to the point where I was just like, I'm so sick of this line! I know there have been several like that over the course of my career, but I just yeah. can't think of them right now. What's your, what's, what was the strangest line you've ever recorded? <laughs> I don't know! Um, I really don't, I really don't know. Probably, I'm a sexy pork cutlet bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sexy pork cutlet bowl. And that is what I sign more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> what show is that? Fury. Oh, I don't remember that line. You did say that multiple times on my show. Yeah. I'm yeah. a sexy pork cutlet Yeah, he, the whole point is he's, uh, when he's, when he's, Getting back into skating, his coach tells him that you know you need to find uh, you need to find your eros, your your sexuality, like your sexual energy. Find whatever it is in your life that kind of describes that. And he's racking his brain, and then one night he just he he's eating pork cutlet bowl. And he's just like, man, I would do anything. It's like there are just days where I would do anything for pork cutlet bowl. It's just like I crave it. I I desire it. That's what it is. That's what my eros is. That's what my sexuality. <laughs> And so, like, his whole thing becomes, I'm a sexy porco. <laughs> I'm a sexy porco, femme fatale that enthralls men. And I'm just like, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and I have since then had pork cutlet bowl, and it is probably my roast, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking tasty. That's awesome. Yeah.
What about you? Any strange lines? Any ad nauseum lines? I'm trying lines? to think. So does me and hmm. does me yeah. does yeah. me and me have a sexy pork cutlet line? I don't think he does. No, me and me was mostly just kind no. of fanboying out. Yeah, about, yeah, he was. I don't. Uh, he didn't get any cool lines like that. I'm me and me, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Anything? Was there ever a point with like uh, with Mikasa? Oh no, I, I have a I have a weird uh, one. All right, yeah, so the weirdest line I've ever said. Uh, I don't remember the line exactly, but it's a, it was in a Walla session. So Walla means uh, it's an inappropriate act, an incorrect acronym. Mm -hmm. It means with all actors. So all of the background scenes that you guys see, like if you see the main characters in a market or at school, mm -hmm. voice actors actually come in and play those characters that are in the background. So if you're in a market, then they're like three or four people will be in the booth together, all being like, oh, I think I'm gonna get some apples today. It's gonna rain today, oh. Um, so, and then in Wallace sessions, there'll be one-offs, right? Like TV announcer A, girl B, et cetera. So uh, I was in a Wallace session for a show called Shit Chan, and, uh, <laughs> and the director, Zach Walton, who's amazing, he was like, hey, does anybody do an Australian accent? I was like, I do. He was like, can you, can you be an Australian grandmother? I was like, yes, I can. And he was like, do you have any issues being an Australian grandmother in a hotel room next to our main character who is experimenting in SM? And I was like, so you want me to be an Australian grandmother dominatrix? He was like, yeah. And I was like, awesome, yes. <laughs> I want to be that lady. And I was. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember the line though. I mean, I do, but there are kids in here. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shin Chan was Shin Chan rock was with. Sure. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. So okay, who has a question, guys? Don't be shy. We ain't scared. Yeah. We ain't scared. Everybody poops. <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> it is. He has a question as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, name's Larry. Hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. <laughs> um, so, Tackle Titan question. I yeah. Um, for your two characters, what was the or what was it like um, experience in a new part of your character for the second season? Like Armin, the first season was kind of quiet and yeah. reserved, and mm -hmm. the second season you started him seeing him more cocky. Yeah. And then Mikasa was sorry, kind of dead. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of her. Like you'd be like, hey, I'm Mikasa. I feel great about life. Does anybody else want to get some? Sherbert? Like, no, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, you're dead. yeah you got it. But, but the first season she's playing it, the second season you saw her be more loving towards uh, Aaron and show her, like, okay, it's not just I love you like a brother, it's like, I love you more like. <laughs> so, well, for those two, for your two characters, what was it like? <laughs> for the two characters, what was it like expressing that or going through those changes with them? Sure. Uh over the course of the first season, I think you hit it dead on, um, Mikasa's uh, general attitude and her uh, drive was to keep her familial unit together, her adopted familial unit, um, and everything, all of her motivation came from keeping the two of them safe. Uh, when they were, when, I feel like the entire show can be summed up in the following, like Aaron being like, I'm gonna do this thing, and then Mikasa being like, yeah, we, we don't need to do that thing, and then Arjun being like, Aaron, season, uh, most of it was just about <laughs> keeping everyone alive, um, and then to see her grow and to see her change has been really exciting um, to see, you know, for her to have more dimension to her as a character has been really great, um, and it, it was challenging at first because I did view her in a very specific way, um, that she would never be with Aaron, and it would never be like a romantic thing, and it wasn't like, oh my god, I need a boyfriend. You know, because uh, we all saw Twilight, you know how that is. Um, <laughs> but her, her devotion to them uh, and her feelings changing, like, uh, some people are like, oh, how do you feel about that? Like, now she does need a boyfriend and whatever, and it's like, no, I'm, I'm not. She hasn't changed who she is. She hasn't changed anything about herself, but she's evolved as a human, and I think that letting people evolve is really important. Yeah. Even though it's really weird to, like, think of Bryce that way. No, right. It's, it's weird. Bryce plays Aaron, by the way. He's great. <laughs> Uh, what about you? I mean, and for Armin, for Armin, I feel like the majority of his changes uh, as a character so far happened 
uh, in the first half, of, in, in, in the first season. Uh, his big defining moment was, you know, just before the big speech when he realizes that, oh no, Aaron and Mika said don't see me as this burden. They don't see me as, you know, as a, as a loser or a crybaby or a weakling or anything. They see me as someone who always, who is calm, has their, has their head on straight and it like has a plan, knows what to do in any situation. And he just kind of realizes he's been his own worst enemy. That he's the only one who's been thinking these things about himself, and, and, and like from that moment on, like immediately, the, you, you see him like, okay, well, I mean, if they this is if they believe in me, I believe in me. Let's do this. Uh, I think the growth that we start to see after that was, you know, kind of like you say, he, he's a little more sure of himself. Maybe, maybe not necessarily cocky, but like he he has gotten down to the point where he's not afraid to put forth an idea, even to you know the military commands to be like, well. I, we could try this, he, but he, he still has that little bit of, not necessarily self-doubt, but he does keep himself in check whenever he does present a plan. Be like, look, this is what I got. Could be the worst plan ever, I'm just saying it, but it, like, you know, if you have something better, probably, let's go with that. Uh, but and for, who has not seen season two? Okay. Uh, so, like, but for uh, for the the last part of season two that you saw, that's where I feel like his growth really happened. Because I think it was, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, no, me neither. Um, like, it's, like it's the episode it's, towards the end where yeah, yes. Facing the so it, it it harkens back to in the first season, you know, where he's talking about, you know, he says the line. Uh, to rise above monsters, we must abandon our humanity. What we fight, we become. And that's that, mo that. This is the moment where he kind of has to. He kind of realizes that that's true, uh, and and that's where that growth comes from. And, and I feel like because you, you know you know I do the narrator for the voice for for the show as well, and, and so I, I think the general idea is that Armin is the one who is telling this story. And while we were recording that, we kind of realized. The narrator voice is the same voice that Armin's using as he's saying these lines. Like, this is that moment where he, like, the Armin that we've been listening to so far is the Armin after this huge redefining moment. And so, like, he's reached that now, and I just want to see where he goes from there. Because we didn't really get to see the, 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 uh, the actual effects of that change yet. So, we have to wait till next year. <laughs> yes, Queen. Yeah. Yes, that's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, Ben's Ben. Hi, Ben. Hey, um, Sorry. <laughs> kind of similar line in, uh, like, in terms of, like, recording, like, strange lines. Uh, was there any type of experience during a recording session or maybe even outside of a recording session that kind of stuck out for you? Like, maybe a strange like, fluff line or maybe just a weird experience during it? <laughs> or the first time seeing so. this Titan? <laughs> <laughs> stuff in Texas. Texas is hot as F. I mean, it's not hot like here. Like there's, it's dry heat. Like it's just super, super, super hot. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help that Texans uh, are, Texas is so big. So there's highways everywhere. There's concrete everywhere. It's like, it is a concrete jungle. Well, concrete retains heat um, and it's awful. So like if it's 108 degrees outside, it's actually like 115, which is amazing. We're cooking eggs on a sidewalk, but not great. If you're in a small padded room in a building, surrounded by concrete that has no air conditioning. <laughs> so it was middle of the, it was like the middle of the summer and we'd been doing like three hours already and it was so hot in there and like there was, we had uh, the os oscillate, oscillating fans, uh, but they make noise so we had to turn them off in between every take. So it'd be like open the small booth that's like the size of a phone booth that's covered in foam in a room that has no air conditioning in a building that has no air conditioning surrounded by an oven and like open the door, turn on the fan, it's like and then like be like <gasps> and then turn off the fan and then close the door right for your take so uh i was like you know what guys like i was in theater i don't care give me some duct tape and they gave me some duct tape and i put my scarf uh, because you always dress in layers when you record so i put because it might be hotter it might be cold or whatever so i put my scarf over the small window 
And I was like, all right, just don't come in here. And then I may or may not have taken some stuff off because it was hot. And I wanted to blast through this. And the faster we got it done, the faster I'd be out of there and in my car and in air conditioning. So I had I got naked, pretty much. I mean, I was wearing like undergarments, but I was and like still sweating like a crazy person. And I was like in there and I was like, I'm just gonna do it, I'm just gonna do it. And they're like, yeah, I mean, whatever you need to do to get there, Dre. And I'm like, it's gonna be amazing! And so, like, and, and so like then you can kind of hear stuff outside of the booth if they don't, if they're not pressing the button because to communicate, they press this button. And they're like, okay, we need that again. Uh, but all I heard was, no, no, no! And then like, this guy who's, uh, Justin opens, he's like a pretty important guy, and he opens the door, he's like, hey, Trina, can I? I'm like, oh my God! He's like, why are you naked? I'm like, why are you idiots? <laughs> <laughs> that was my funniest recording moment. <laughs> what do you got? That's my funniest recording <laughs> <laughs> Was this at the old? Yeah, it was oh, at the Frostbank oh, building. Oh, wow. It was awful. Was it always no air conditioning at that building? Or? No, 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 it had just broken. Oh. And they were like, you can still do this. I was like, yeah, I can. I'm hungry. I need to pay my rent. <laughs> beep boop, beep boop. Scream in, scream. And see, now, we, now we're at the ice box of Texas. <laughs> but it's the, because like the, the building we're in now, the, the, serve, the, the room that they keep all their servers and stuff, it's not on a separate air conditioning system. So I mean, in order to keep the servers cool, they keep it at like 30 some odd degrees or whatever. So, but so the entirety of the studio, no matter what time of year it is, is always like freezing 35, 40 degrees. So, just it could be the middle of summer again, huh. concrete jungle, 115 outside, and we're wearing hoodies. Sweaters. And sweaters. <laughs> yeah. One extreme to the next. Naked. Naked. Ooh. We just don't have to get naked. <laughs> you can if you want. Anyway. A few people have gotten naked. At the frost or yeah. Or, yeah. I remember hearing a story about one of the, the uh, one of the elderly gentlemen for Funimation doing that as well. Like yeah, but he, everything. <laughs> I bet he, I bet he loved it smelling pretty gross. But <laughs> <laughs> too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. Love the quest, true. Yeah. Yes. Um, my name is John, and, and I was just wondering, like, what what made y'all want to get into the Tech on Titan um, for season one and two for the comeback? It's like, what made us want to get into it? Yeah. Dollar dollar bills on dollar dollar bills. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I uh, just because of the, the work that we do, we're, we're working on so many shows all the time, it's very rare that we get an opportunity to kind of watch shows beforehand mm -hmm. anymore. Like, like we did, we kind of the last thing you want to do after you've been working in, you know, at the booth, you know, in the booth for like eight to ten hours or working on a script or whatever is watch more cartoons. Uh, but this is one of those shows that a lot of us had the opportunity to to uh, watch beforehand and really get to appreciate, like long before we ever knew that Funimation was even going to get the show. Mm -hmm. So like, when the opportunity actually came along, it, it was like, oh, like that feeling of actually getting to go out and audition for something that you were already excited about, as opposed to coming in and reading for a show you may not have never heard of, you may not have ever heard of. Uh, or if you weren't necessarily that interested in, but you know, it's a it's a job. Uh, this had had a lot more electricity to it, mm -hmm. and then the fact that you know so many of us got to and be a part of that, uh, which doesn't happen often. <laughs> <laughs> you don't very often get to be in the stuff you want to be in. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was it was really cool. It was so dope. Like I saw the. My brother told me about Attack on Titan before before we knew that Funimation would even be recording it. And uh, I watched the first episode and I stopped in hopes that Funimation would get it or I'd be able to audition for it. Because personally for me, like uh, I don't watch the shows ahead of time, uh, which is my choice. Uh, my body, my choice. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I didn't watch all of it and it was kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Because if I was cast, then to be in one of the most epic animes of all time. Like, I would have been comfortable being girl B that's like smashed by a boulder in the first scene. That's cool. Um, but I, if I didn't get cast, like, I was gonna marathon the entire first season, like in that really unhealthy way where your friends have to check on you, like, are you eating? Yeah. <laughs> have you showered? Thank you. Uh, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, that was nice. Uh, so. Yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, so uh, 
I, I was, it's, it is so rare that you like set your sights on a character and then you get it, uh, or a show and you get it. Um, as actors, we audition all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And you go into an audition and you give it everything you have. Um, and at least for me, after an audition, like I have to wash my hands of it. Because otherwise I'm just like, are they gonna call? Yeah. Are they gonna call? Are they gonna call? Are they gonna call? Like, we're not talking about my dating life. This is actually. And you don't, sometimes that could be, it could be a couple of weeks before you hear, sometimes depending on how long the show runs and how long until the character that they actually are gonna cast you as comes in. You may not hear anything for a couple of months, and for all you know, it's like, well. I didn't book that. I didn't book that, and then it comes along. But like, yeah, you, there's a saying that, uh, You'll, you'll do 99 auditions before you book one. Yeah. And it's, so like, in, in a lot of times, you know, you're, you're not gonna know what those are. So when the one that comes along is five, cool, thank you, five. Um, when the one that does come along happens to be something that you're genuinely excited about, it's, it's, it's like Christmas morning. It's, it, 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 mm. You can't really, you, you, it's it kind of an indescribable feeling. It's just pure excitement. Yes. Get your, somebody answer your phone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hi there, my name is Kevin. Hi. Thank you for sharing about your craft. That's actually what was part of my question. So okay. You've answered most of it, so let me just ask this question. As actors, as performers, what is your desire to be on the stage and be seen fully or being the voiceover actor? Well, they have their differences and they have their similarities. Uh, you are still putting yourself out there. Uh, acting, no matter and no matter what form it is, is still it, it's it's kind of the same way as, as anybody who draws. You're you're still in a way you're bearing your soul uh, and, and and you're putting yourself out there for other people to see you. Making your it's it, it's the most vulnerable you will ever make yourself to people that you never met before. Uh, and it, it, you, it, it's really scary because it opens you, you, you open yourself up to being judged and to... Uh, and people um, like to judge. Yeah, very quickly. Um, very great. Yeah. <laughs> so, for me, it's, it's, it's more about, and, and yes, it, like as any artist, I feel like, you know, we are kind of, we're all seeking that some form of validation for whatever yeah. we're doing. So whether I'm on stage or whether I'm in the booth, or drawing something or writing something and putting it out to the world, I, I am hoping that it reaches somebody and that it and that they appreciate it uh, and and maybe get across what I'm what I'm trying to do or at least think that I did a good job. Uh, but at, at the same time, it's this is also this is what I wanted to do. This is the only thing that I could see myself doing and being happy. So it, it, and on the one hand. Yeah, what people think is really important to me, but they, on the other hand, I'm just doing what I love, and it's fulfilling. It's very fulfilling in that regard. Agreed, 100% agree. He's very smart. Uh, yeah, it is. It, it is the same, and it, it. But it. If you're an actor, if you're an actor, and most people that I know that are actors have known they were going to be an actor or wanted it uh, their whole lives. So in any in any realm where you can play pretend, I mean, and if you get paid for it, that's like even more dope. Like, okay, <laughs> like that's great. Um, but yeah, it's it's the only thing it's the only thing I could ever see myself doing or be. So it's pretty dope. I'm gonna stop talking now so this handsome young gentleman can ask a question. Um, in in season two. Is, does it show any in, in the episodes Captain Levi? And why don't the Scout Regiment attack the Titans in the trees when at night? Well, that's smart. No. <laughs> Levi does show up a few times. Uh, and, you know, I guess generally, yeah, it would be a great idea to attack them at night. But then, you know, have you seen season two yet? Not all of it. Okay. So, depending on how far you're in, there's actually a really good reason why they ultimately realize that they can't attack the Titans at night. And in case you haven't seen it yet, I don't want to spoil it. Well, I read a little bit on the manga, okay. and in the full moon, Titans started showing up because of the Beast Titan. Mm -hmm. Is that one reason why? 
Don't spoil. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're, trying, we're trying not to do any particular spoilers, like some people may not have seen season two or read the manga yet. But I will say that uh, you're you might be you're kind of in the realm. So but you go watch the episode and find out. <laughs> and then you'll have to you'll have to find us on Facebook and tell us what you think about the answer that we will not reveal. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin, thank you for your question. Oh, lots of Kevins today. Actually, he's my son. Oh, oh that's yeah. awesome. Kevin was the name of the bird. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Media or a handheld small device. Yeah. If you would like to, <laughs> if you would like to follow either Josh or myself, you can find Josh at at Josh Greeley on Twitter. Same on Facebook. Uh, you can find me at Trina Nishimura. That's N I S H I N U R A. Or Trina Nish on Instagram. And if you haven't heard of it yet, I would like to tell you a little bit about a thing called Anime Unlocked. Uh, it's really really fly. Check it out on the App Store. All of those are all my friends. Just look for Unlocked on the App Store and yes. you can come and uh, chat with either myself or this handsome gentleman over here. Yeah, and many, many others. And many, many others. Uh, we will now be returning to our table if you have any questions that you did not get answered. Guys, thank you so much for coming thank out. You I hope you had fun. Thank you. Yes, we have to follow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we do need to clear the room for the next panel. Even if you're here for the Baltimore panel, we do need to clear the room.